Yeah, I'm ready. Coach, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, well, let's just get right to it. If you could share some opening thoughts, and then we'll get to questions. I wish we could have had the first quarterback. Um, we got we put ourselves in a hole. We never could really come back. Um, you know, we're, we're not as explosive in certain areas as we have been in past years, so it was a little bit tougher. But I will say that uh, the, the players really competed and fought hard, even though we had a tough start to the game. Um, had good plans coming out at halftime. We just didn't just didn't get get it executed. Um, we lost to a better team today. Uh, they outcoached us. They outplayed us. You have to give them credit. Um, guys started to rally and come back a little bit. We just never could get anything established in the running game to really stabilize them so we could get a little bit of flow on offense. Uh, and then kind of got one dimensional there and we got behind by too much. Thank you, coach. Members of the media, if you have a question for Oklahoma State coach Mike Gundy, please click raise hand and we're going to try and get to you. So, uh, since there's no questions, but um, uh, I told the team afterwards, you know, we've got to get back tonight. We've got to get rested. We've got to rally back, uh, come together as a group tomorrow. We've got to grade the tape. Got to be critical mm -hmm. of ourselves as coaches. Got to be critical of ourselves as players and um, get back to work tomorrow night uh, and get ready for the next game. That's good stuff. Thank you, coach. Our first question is going to come from Frank Bonner from the Tulsa world. Go ahead, Frank. Hey, Mike, I wanted to ask, um, after all you had that, uh, after all you had that, that, that hot start, the defense did string together some stops. What did you think about how they were able to respond after those first five drives for OU? Well, like I said, we, I mean, we came out and got behind by 21 points and basically gave ourselves very slim chance of coming back. And then they responded and we played well. Um, you have to give credit to their coaches and their players. They hit us with some plays in the first quarter and got a big jump on us. And then this is another game where you had to go to Ellingworth with, with, Spenders, uh, with Spencer Sanders getting hurt. What did you think about how he was able to come in, especially in that first drive? Well, it seemed like he played good. Uh, you know, there's some times where he had a few mistakes, but, but overall being thrown into the fire, he, he's, he's practiced a lot. He's young, but, uh, but he played with pretty well. Um, I mean, we didn't protect as good as we needed to protect. Uh, so, so it's difficult back there right now for us playing quarterback. Thank you, Mike. Our next question is going to come from Scott Wright from the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Scott. Mike, could you talk about the, uh, the decisions at, uh, at quarterback and when you were, uh, when you used guys, when you, or when you changed and when you uh, went back to Spencer? Well, he started feeling better. Um, he got dinged in the head. And so uh, the medical staff usually makes those decisions on when those guys can come back and are ready. And so in the second half, <clears throat> they said that they felt like that he was OK and clear enough to go back in if we wanted him to. How, uh, how hard was it to, uh, to manage that, knowing uh, that you had, you had a, a young guy out there and not getting protected? And then, uh, and then waiting for Spencer to be cleared. Well, you got to do what you got to do. You know, you play the hand you've been dealt. Uh, it's not the it's not the most perfect situation, uh, but we had guys that competed. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, they they played really good today. But uh, at the end of the game, we still had guys that were competing and playing hard, and and uh, I was proud of them for that. But uh, you know, you got to got to play the hand you've been dealt. So you know, he got his head dinged and. Uh, medical people had him out and put the young guy in and he played a little bit and then we cleared and we put him back in. So we just did what we could with what we had. Thanks, Mike. Our next question is going to come from Barry Trammell from the Oklahoma. Go ahead, Barry. Yeah, Mike, will you, could you tell what was the uh, problem defensively, especially the first two drives? Uh, they went down length of the field twice in a row. After that, you played a lot better, but what was going wrong those first two drives? Well, they, they just, uh, you know, without looking at the tape, it looked like they schemed us. They did a nice job with their schemes and, and got us in certain coverages and, and had plays that benefited them better. And then they made 
they made runs afterwards. A uh, couple times we had drop coverages, which we haven't done that much this year. Um, we'll have to get that cleaned up, but I just have to get, I, I would just give them credit to, to be direct and answer your question. I'd give them credit for the schemes they had in the first quarter. Our next question is going to come from Ryan Breeden from the Ocali. Go ahead, Ryan. Hey, Mike. You've talked in the you've talked in the past about how um, how difficult it is to tackle in open space and how you've been grateful at how well that had been going up to this point. Did it feel like it was a little bit harder tonight to make some of those open field tackles with the athletes that you had? We we missed a few open field tackles more than we've missed all year. Um, they've got good skill out there. I mean, they've got speed and guys that can make some plays and uh, the quarterback is shifty. Um, it was a little more difficult today than what it has been, yes. Um, can you kind of describe a little bit of the emotions during the game, especially near halftime when you guys kind of, when the two teams kind of met up going into the tunnels, can you just kind of describe the emotions that happened during the game and when it got a little bit icy? Well, that's just part of the game. You know, with football, this is a, a very tough, violent, physical game, and there's emotions. I, I wasn't even around where it happened. Luckily, it didn't get ugly. They kind of got everybody separated and got us on our own way. So, um, you know, that's just football sometimes. Thanks. Coach, thank you so much. We appreciate you. Any final thoughts, just kind of while we have everyone here? Uh, no, not at the time. I think it's pretty clear cut. So, uh, wish we had played better, but we didn't have a very good start. But maybe we can we can uh, play a little bit better next week. So, thanks, guys. Thanks, coach. Safe travels home. Better compete, though. Way to compete. Stay in the game and compete. Corner and catch. Tylen, how you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks. All right, members of the media, if you have questions for receiver Tylen Wallace, please click raise hand and we're going to try and get to you. Tell you what, Tylen, while we're waiting for the hands to be raised, if you could maybe just give us um, your thoughts on the team's performance offensively, maybe OU's defense, and we'll go from there. Yeah, uh, just give credit to them. They had a pretty good scheme for what they were doing on uh, offense. Uh, for us, we were struggling kind of the whole game, uh, trying to execute plays. Uh, I just, I mean, we just got to be better. We got to be better, get prepared for next week. All right. Our first question is going to come from, Scott, excuse me, it's going to come from Scott Wright from the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Scott. Kylan, how difficult was it to, uh, to, to get going when you were having uh... – uh, the struggles that you were having offensively, and then uh, and then they were scoring on the other side and putting you guys in an early hole. Uh, you know that's always a tough situation coming out when you're struggling on offense, and then the other team's kind of clicking on offense. That's always a struggle. But uh, credit to our guys, we kind of we kept our heads up. We weren't down. We were like, okay, you know that's fine. You know they were score. We're gonna come back. We're gonna score. We're gonna drive. So uh, I was really proud of the way the team just held their heads up and didn't get down on themselves. What did you think of uh, of Shane while he was in there? It was good. You know, like, I, like I've been saying with Shane all year, I mean, uh, he comes in and does what he's supposed to do. Uh, you can't expect uh, too much from a young guy like that, but I'm just I'm just really proud of the way he, he holds himself when he gets in the game. He holds himself like a like an older guy, and he comes out there and does what he's asked to do. Thank you. Our next question is going to come from Barry Trammell from the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Barry. Yeah, uh, Tyler, did anything about this game surprise you, in, either in terms of uh, matchups or the schemes or anything else that you really weren't expecting, or did was it what you sort of thought it would be? Uh, not, not really. Nothing was really too surprising. They came out there and uh, kind of put out there what they've always done this whole year on film. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I can't really say anything was really just that really came out there and just surprised us. We just got to come back and uh, – execute better on offense. All right, our final question for Tyler Wallace is going to come from Marshall Levinson from Pokes Report. Go ahead, Marshall. Uh, Tyler, can you kind of describe um, what the challenges are of going back and forth between quarterbacks, especially when the offense can't really get going? Does that pose any other challenges that um, you guys really haven't 
had before. I know you've played with Shane a little bit, but when you're bouncing back and forth, what is what is that like? Uh, I guess sometimes it's it's a little challenging just switching back. You know, they're they're two different people. They, they they're two different football players. So being able to comment kind of when they come in, you got to be able to adjust to you know how they do their certain things, how they run the offense. They run it two different ways. So um, I think that's somewhat of a challenge, but um, you know that's just comes with uh, getting reps in with them at practice. So. Can't say it was really too much of a challenge, but I can say uh, just a little bit, I guess. Is there anything you have to change about your game specifically between one quarterback or the other, whether it's um, how you attack a defense yourself or the routes you're running or that offensive package? Uh, not not really for the most part. I think both guys go out there and uh, do a lot of things kind of similar, even though they have different games. But um, for the most part, I think uh, you don't really have to, for, especially for me, I don't have to really change too much whoever's in there. Thanks. Tylen, thank you so much. We appreciate you. Safe travels home. Thank you. Hi, Coach. How are you? Oh. Been better. I got you. Well, I'll tell you what, before we start taking questions, maybe could you just give us your thoughts on the performance today, what you saw out there? <laughs> That's brief. Um, not very good. Got to gotta nuke that game plan and, and, uh, and, and start over. Got to find a way to move that football. Um, you know, we had some challenges today, and, and uh, you know, we thought we had addressed some of the issues, or at least what we thought that they would give us, and, and – uh, you know, and, and it still posed a problem. So, got to figure it out. Got to get back, watch that tape, see what the hell's wrong, and, and uh, get it figured out and get ready for next Saturday. All right. Our first question is going to come from Chris Becker from the Ocali. Go ahead, Chris. Hey, Coach. Uh, you know, throughout you know, this whole season, really, but really in this game, you had injuries in the backfield with running backs and quarterbacks, injuries up front. You know, how challenging is it to gain offensive momentum when you're constantly shuffling guys in and out? It is, but it's, it, you know, like we tell our guys, it's no excuse. You know, we got to find a way. Uh, you know, the game, the, the ball, the stadium, the fan, they, it doesn't care. They don't care. You know, you got to find a way to score and you got to find a way to put the football in the end zone. And, and we didn't do it. So, um, you know, I got to get back. We got to get back as a coaching staff and, and, and see what the hell the problem is, you know, and, and go from there. You know, it's hard for me to, to say, here's the issue, you know, right off the top of my head without watching the film. And what did you see from Shane in his short time in the game? You know, I thought he did some good things. You know, he was up and down a little bit, made some throws, missed some throws. But, you know, I thought he um, ran the offense efficiently enough for us to, to do some things. So, um, again, same thing. I've got to get back and watch it and really, and really dissect how he did. But um, as of right now, I felt like he did a pretty good job. Thanks, Coach. Yes, sir. Our next question is going to come from Ryan Breeden from the Ocali. Go ahead, Ryan. Hey, Casey. It's, uh, it, it's no secret at this point that you guys have had some, uh, some problems at, at, with the O-line with injuries and young guys who haven't had experience before. How difficult was it to get a game plan executed and to get things going on offense with your offensive line is having injuries and shuffling in and out, especially with um, the talent that OU has up front? It was hard. You know, perhaps the best part of their defense is their front. And, uh, you know, so it was hard. And we knew it coming in. It was no surprise. Um, so, you know, we tried to do some things to help our guys out and, and, you know, give them a little bit of extra help here and there. And then all of a sudden you you lose another guy. You lose, you know, obviously, you know, your best offensive lineman. You know, as soon as Tevin went down, then then you reshuffle things again. And and, uh, and it's, just, it's just a matter of just trying to catch up. You know, there's a domino effect in there. So, um, it's it's tough, yeah, it is. So and then the quarterback went down for a minute, and, and uh, you know she was down for a minute, and they're trying to figure out what everybody's strengths, what everybody's weaknesses are, and, and trying to put something together, a drive or two that would get it on the field, using what they do well. And so therein lies the challenge. Um, but again, you know we've got to be able to move. Well, we've got to be able to hang our hat on a, a set few plays and be able to move and operate no matter who's in there. And um, that's the mistake that I make. You got to get that done. Thanks, Coach. Yes, sir. 
And our final question for offense coordinator Casey Dunn is going to come from Barry Trent. Go ahead, Barry. Yeah, Casey, you got down 21 to nothing, and you'd only run, I think, five plays, six plays. How much did that change your game plan? Did you go you feel like you had to sort of go away from the run at that point? Um, you also had a quarterback change in the middle of that. How did that, the deep hole, affect the game plan? Yeah, that was that was alarming for us because we were used to that kind of situation. You know, defense has been really, really stout, and, and so we haven't had that situation. Um, fortunately for us, because we haven't been dynamic on offense by any stretch. So, um, you know, all of a sudden, yeah, you're thrust in a position where you need to score. Now we didn't go crazy and just start throwing it all over the yard because, you know, at this moment when that happened, it's not who we were going to be. I didn't think we were going to just all of a sudden be able to just chuck it all over the yard and, and win. Um, so we wanted to methodically try and get down in it and crawl back in to a position to where we'd have a chance in the second half. And we did that. You know, we, we went in the second half, 27-13, and knowing that we'd get the ball back in the second half to start it. Um, and we thought that maybe we'd get this thing to 27-20. And uh, it just it didn't materialize. We didn't see the end zone again. But, you know, we gave ourselves a chance and, and, um, in the second half. So it just didn't happen. Coach, thank you so much. Safe travels home. Thanks, guys. Malcolm, thanks for, thank you for joining us. No problem. All right, before we take questions, maybe if you can give us some general thoughts on what you saw out there and you know overall impressions of the game. You know, you came in, did a good job. I mean, you got to give him credit. All right, our first question is going to come from Marshall Levinson from Pokes Report. Go ahead, Marshall. Uh, Malcolm, obviously, get down 21 nothing. think nine minutes in. Did they do anything that you guys didn't expect early on in that game or at any point um, that kind of got you down in that hole? And what was the what was the adjustment like after after getting in that hole? No, I think it was just – we just started off slow. You know, they were just picking us because we were in man coverage. And so they did a good job of uh, kind of disguising that. But other than that, I mean, that's pretty much it. Thanks. All right. Our next question is going to come from Barry Trammell from the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Barry. Yeah, Malcolm, what what specifically was wrong those first two drives? Uh, they just marched down the field twice in a row, 75 yards. Uh, and what did you fix? Because after that, you, you played a lot better defensively. Yeah, I mean, we just uh, recognized the uh, picks better. And they started off with the screen to uh, Stevenson, the running back. So, I mean, Obviously, we recognized that better and just uh, we saw it coming. So, I mean, that's, that's kind of what we fixed. Our next question is going to come from Ryan Breeden from the Ocali. Go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, Malcolm, can you talk about the challenge of trying to tackle some of OU's athletes in space in the one-on-one? -on -one? Malcolm, I accidentally muted you. Can you unmute that? Can you hear me? Yeah, sorry about that. That was my fault. Yeah, he's done hard every chance he got. So, you know, he definitely had to wrap him up. Thank you. All right, Malcolm, thank you so much. Appreciate you joining us. Safe travels home. Appreciate it. Tyler, how are you today? Uh, could be better, but yeah. Understandable. I'll tell you what, before we take questions, maybe if you could share just your general thoughts on the game and the team's performance, what you saw out there. Uh, I felt like our team didn't quit fighting. I mean, you saw I was trying to encourage guys on the sideline, just keep fighting, keep fighting to the zeros on the clock. And that's the only thing we could ask for in that situation. So. All right, we appreciate you. Uh, your first question is going to come from Barry Trammell from the Oklahoma. Go ahead, Barry. Tyler, you got any explanation for that, for the start? Um, oh, you had two 75-yard drives to 
to start the game and then scored after the turnover. The rest of the game, you guys played pretty good defense, but that start just put you in such a hole. Do you have an explanation for that, for that first quarter? Oh, uh, uh, I felt like we had to get our feet underneath us in the first quarter. And once we got our feet underneath us and we started stopping them, and we know we could stop them. And then that's where I thought the defense started to turn around. And you can see the encouragement on the field. Our next question is going to come from Scott Wright from the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Scott. Tyler, how much uh, how much were they doing early that you guys uh, hadn't seen or uh, or hadn't game planned for, and uh, and how much did that change? You guys uh, were able to adjust to it. Uh, I feel like going into the game, we had a good game plan, and then in the second half, we Coach Knowles came back and you know fixed some couple of stuff and tweaked some stuff, so it put us in a good position on the field. Was there some stuff in that uh, that early first quarter that, uh, that you guys hadn't seen? Uh, no, not really. We we've been seeing everything. We've been practicing hard. It's just what happened. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. One last question for Barry Trammell, and that'll be it for Tyler Lacey. Go ahead, Barry. Yeah, uh, Tyler, you guys did a great job against the run until the fourth quarter. Stevenson got loose for a bunch of stuff in the fourth quarter. Did you just get worn down, do you think, um, against the running game? Oh, no, I don't think we got worn down versus the running games. I think we, some people had just some little miscues, but we were, we were, we were ta attacking the offensive line. They were all tired during the whole game. And I, I feel like the D-line the D played good in stopping, trying to stop the run in early half, I mean, early quarters. Well, Tyler, we appreciate you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, have, have a safe trip home. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, Coach. We appreciate you. Um, before we take any questions, um, for Oklahoma State Defensive Coordinator Jim Knowles, Coach, could you maybe just start us off with your impressions of the game, what you saw out there? You know, um, we started slow, obviously. Um, in, in the um, couple big plays we gave up, I thought we started fast in the run game. You know, we focused really hard on um, stopping their run. And, uh, you know, they hit us, they hit us with some, uh, some crack, crack screens and, uh, you know, schemes. And we knew they were coming. Um, I felt like I could have done a better job coaching those those particular plays. I mean, the one early on that that uh, they hit on an over route on Lee. I mean, he was he was right there. That's not a big deal. I don't have any problem with that. But I thought they um, they did some nice things in their in the in their crack screen game early that uh, we could have done a, a better job. I could have done a better job of getting the guys prepared for that. But uh, we focused on stopping the run. And I thought we did that, you know, until the end. Um, but needed some more uh, adjustments in the passing game, which we made. And then we got hurt by the run at the end. So um, I thought we battled all along until the end and, and gave up, uh, again, a few big plays that, that uh, took us out of it. Thank you, Coach. Your first question is going to come from Barry Trammell from the Oklahoma. Yeah, Jim, did, you guys did a great job against Stevenson until the fourth quarter, and then he started running a little bit wild. Did Did you get worn down, or? No, I don't think we got worn down. You know, um, I, I, you know, I blame myself. We started to get a little more aggressive. I thought we were pressing like the play when we had him backed up. You know, I called a blitz that was aggressive and, 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 you know, trying to make a play, trying to get a safety, trying to make something happen. And, uh, you know, what happens is if you, if you, if you miss anywhere inside or, you know, it, it, it's kind of a boom or bust thing and um, they got us on it. So, uh, you know, I thought that's what happened in the fourth quarter. We just started pressing too much. 
you know, guys were guys were trying to make plays, uh, do things maybe outside of their of their gap or their their job because they're trying to make plays. And then when that happens, it's easy to get out of place. Our next question is going to come from Marshall Levinson from Pokes Report. Go ahead, Marshall. Uh, coach, obviously gotten a gotten a hole pretty early, but what can you say about the the defense's energy and effort from what you saw uh, throughout the game, um, and then especially uh, later in the game as as time started to wind down? Yeah, I mean, I thought it was, uh, you know, we got on our heels early, right? Because when you fall into a hole like that, you know, you take a couple punches like a fight, you get you get knocked back on your heels. Um, and it, and it and it took us a little bit, you know, to recover. But I thought they fought back really well, you know. Um, second and third quarter, um, I thought we made some adjustments. Um, you know, the effort was there. I just think uh, when you get down like that, when you when you put yourself or get yourself into a hole, um, you start pressing too much. Guys start trying to do too much, and it's. Um, it's not as easy just to, you know, hold the line and do your job because guys just start trying to make plays, you know, and, and uh, against a team like that, you, you, you get out of your space. It can hurt you. And our final question is going to come from Scott Wright from the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Scott. Jim, you mentioned the, um, the, the pick screens that they were, uh, that they were running. Is that, a hazard of running man as much as you guys do, or is that oversimplifying things? No, 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 you're, you're correct. I mean, that is, that is a hazard. And, you know, it's um, kind of like practicing for an option team. It's, it's, it's very hard to simulate that in practice, you know, um, full speed. And uh, like I said, I could have done a better job. I mean, we, we, simulated, it. we simulated it and we knew it was coming. But um, you know, got to find our what I got to find a way to give our guys a better look at that in practice. It's just a hard thing to simulate um, against your scout team, you know. So I, I got to find a better way to to prepare our guys for that. Did they uh, did they take some stuff out of the Kansas State playbook uh, as well, or or had you seen most of Not what really. they were? No, 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 most of what they did was was you know, they're, they're good. They're really good at what they do. And they did it. Um, you know, we knew. You know, maybe one one play. Uh, you know, where they ran um, a a wing guy underneath. You know, in man coverage, that's hard. That that was hard to handle. That that kind of made me think of Kansas State. But uh, for the most part, they did what what they did that they do, and they're really good at it. And um, you know, we gave up too much early, got in a hole, battled back. And then um, just couldn't sustain it at the end. Thanks, Jim. Coach, we appreciate you joining us. Have a safe trip home. Members of the media, we appreciate you as well. Thank you so much.